wish I could say aloha this week again, but I can't. Hello again from Los Angeles. Sorry that you're in Los Angeles. That's okay. It's a little painful. Is it sad for you? It's a little sad, yeah. So I decided to go away again this weekend. <laughs> oh, good. Where are you going? Ow. Burn myself. Where are oh. you going? Aren't those fake candles behind you? How'd you burn yourself? Okay, first of all, fuck <laughs> you. I thought you understood movie magic. Oh, your tea burned you. Sorry. My tea burned me. I have transitioned to fake candles because of my brain fog. So the number of number of times I've left, you know, the kettle on or food in the oven in the last 10 months is innumerable. So I have now got fake candles, which switch off after six hours because I would also forget them. Right. <laughs> That's probably very smart at this point. Tell us where you're going. Oh, I, it's a secret. It's a secret undisclosed location in, in wine country. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Just tell us where you're going. You I'm going to wine country. What is wine country? <laughs> Some of us don't know what that means. It's just a region that I made up that's north of where you live. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. So you're going to go up north a little bit and... Yeah. Frolic with in the vineyards. You know, that's, that's exactly what I did yesterday. Did you? Yesterday, what did you do yesterday? I went to Folded Hills, which is, is about... That? It's a lovely vineyard, about um, 35 minutes north of here, because it was my wedding anniversary yesterday. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so I went to cheer myself up. Went and had a glass of wine... And walked around and went to a. Pe- they had a. They have a little farmstead and farm stand there, and they have a field with. It honestly, I felt like I was in a Disney movie. So you go around and it's like this higgledy piggledy farm that honestly looks like a set at Disney, and it's so cute. And there's like a big pumpkin patch and like a scarecrow, and um, you go around the corner of the silo and there's this field, and there's two donkeys two geese five little piggies a six weeks old piggy what she was so cute i could have died i have to she take was... will here he's obsessed with you have pigs. to oh my god she's tiny <gasps> she's like a football oh my god okay 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 you have to take him and it's on it will be on your way up and you can just stop by you don't even have to go to the winery if you don't want. You can go and see the animals. There's a, a llama, a goat, a cow with a bell around its neck. You know, the whole thing. And this little piggy, she's six weeks old. She lo- She's so cute. I'm going to post pictures of her on the Instagram because she actually is smiling. Like, she smiles. And when I was scritch- scratching her, she wanted me to scratch her belly and instead of like going down in sections like a normal animal she just went like she just and keeled over, over in one move <laughs> and you know how like rigid little pig's legs are she just sort of just went in one movement plonked down on her side and presented her stomach to me what's her name twinkle twinkle the <laughs> i know i know i know doesn't make any sense. That's amazing. So I know, how, she's so cute. How was yesterday for you? How was the grief? How was the joy? Where were you? I really wanted to be joyful, but I just wasn't really, to be honest with you. Mm. I, I just felt heavy and sad and a bit lonely and not because I'm alone, but because a bit of a lonely old road. <laughs> yeah. And it was just heavy and somber and and I'm glad that we went on that little trip it just helped a lot to get my mind out of just you know being inside or being in my usual routine and yeah it was just hard it wasn't I didn't cry because I cried I think a couple of nights before I had a big cry about everything but just heavy. I don't really know how else exactly to to describe it. I think I was also slightly emotionally tapped out because I started, I restarted the trauma therapy on Monday. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be doing this thing called EMDR, which is like a type of therapy that makes your eyes go back and forth to replicate the dream state. And it kind of pulls 
traumatic memories from like trauma storage and tries to put them with the regular memories so that you don't have this like physiological trauma response every time you think about certain things wow yeah like that was heavy (laughs) so i was still kind of like reeling from that when i uh woke up the next day and had to deal with the um anniversary so so it was a little it was spicy spicy day wow well Good for you for getting through it. That was the first anniversary that's come and gone since Ryan died. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So. And Twinkle the pig really made my day. She'll never know it, but she uh, brought true joy to my day. Oh. And something else exciting is going on over there that we can hear in the background. Your castle out back is being built as we speak. Yeah, it is. It's being being put together we've got the walls up now the wardrobe wall is being built and then i'm gonna help this afternoon putting this thing called tyvek on very boring don't know why i'm sharing this there's all these construction things and i'm trying to help where i can i'm very weak you have like five shirtless tanned babes out there working on it amazing (laughs) just one just one bless him um but we're trying to get him some help because it's taking way too long (laughs) for him i mean he needs to like carry on living his life but it's good it's look it's got like window holes now so it's looking it's good how exciting i know i think we're probably like a month out and then i'll you know, make the sojourn from my morning suite inside to my <laughs> rejuvenation station outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what a week it's been. There's a lot in the news. There, the Met Gala happened. Yes, the Met. Very, um, what was the theme this year? It was like know? American fashion, I think. Met Gala theme. Oh, that's why it was awful. Yeah, that's um, why it was the Gala worst theme. ever. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it was god awful and totally uh forgettable oh yeah god it's american theme god that feels a bit you know i think i can speak for a lot of people maybe when i say that most of us are feeling not quite so uh proud as yeah, we not quite so patriotic <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So um, I think patriotism feels to be waning slightly. I noticed that on the 4th of July, it was sort of just like, yeah. Woo woo. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it feels a little forced at this moment in time. Yeah. And I think that right now, I mean, it's just coming to mind as we're speaking, but the American identity is a bit all over the place at the minute. I think we're having like every individual and every country most countries i think we're probably facing a bit of an identity crisis in in the pandemic and and in the wake of you know two such strange presidencies absolutely and i think that that was really reflected in the um theme of the gala and also just the kind of the looks and the energy nobody really looked happy it didn't it didn't feel like it usually does. No, um, it didn't. I didn't know who 90% of these people are. Yeah, I thought but that, that's that was me really, too. really, really just... interesting. Well, Lucy, you don't know who anyone is. I don't is. know who anybody is. But neither you do look... you, bitch. No, I, but I'm better than you. I at least know who some people are. You're absolutely tragic. When you don't, I could. I think we should play a game on the pod where it <laughs> was going to be me doing this, but actually I think it should be you. You, I'm going to show you pictures of modern famous people. You could just go through the Met Gala. I have no idea who anyone was. The (laughs) only person I knew was Emily Blunt. Oh my God. And that's really like old, old school. I mean, I guess she's done some movies, but I'm just going to pull up my little Met Gala file here. Yeah. So let's not um, go through everything because we have a lot to talk about today, but let's do our best and our worst. Yeah. 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 Tell me what some of your, okay. So I can hands down tell you. I think my my best and my worst is all rolled into one outfit. (laughs) I love that. Okay. That's great. Tell us who. The guy who was with Rihanna, who was wearing a quilt. ASAP Rocky. Yeah, whatever. ASAP Rocky. He's an artist and Rihanna's boyfriend. The best and also the worst outfit all rolled into one. Boom, bam, bada boom, done. 
I'm glad that you said that. I thought that that was really, I thought that they both looked really fucking strange. Yeah, strange. But also I thought it was funny because I thought it was kind of a good summary of like how the event felt, which is that like, it seemed like everyone would just rather be at home in bed. (laughs) And I, oh, I also, I I felt when I looked at those (laughs) outfits was like, this feels like a bit of a kind of, Fuck you. I don't think it was. I also loved Kim Kardashian just wearing just a garbage bag just all over her face. (laughs) I get what she was doing. I don't. Can you explain it? It It's just, it's a statement, isn't it? She's trying to be avant-garde, but I don't know that you can be a Kardashian and be avant-garde. But my thing about it was, is that I just wish it wasn't made of jersey. I would have liked it had it been made of another fabric. I've got such a thing about elasticated jersey. I think there is nothing more unattractive. Oh, I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. On on a woman or any person than elasticated jersey. What about this Um, man with a green fake alien baby like our guest Abby Bella? It felt like a desperate grab, a desperate reach. I don't understand the logic. Am I missing the punchline? What is it? I think we're the punchline, Lucy. I think we are too. I, I think, think somebody's pulled a prank punchline. on us. Okay. I'm going to pull up mine. Okay, so let's hear your because you see you're such oh a my God. you're such a fashionista, Annabelle, and you're so oh, I like I love clothes. I love clothes. You but you're that. also so woke in the world of celebrity. So let's hear your take on Lucy, all that's these- not what woke means. I have no idea what woke means. I just throw it around. It's not I know woke <laughs> I still don't know what it means. <laughs> well fucking look it up then. Okay, so <laughs> first of all I'd like to say but I think everyone's outfits were for the most part awful and demented. Um <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg, who I can't stand, is wearing some sort of... Oh, yeah. She's wearing this purple... Purple tent. Um, trash bag. They're all just trash bags. <laughs> Again, a really good representation of sort of how... America. <laughs> I know, yeah. Okay, so let's go for my worst. Whoopi. Right. Okay. And this is not in order. Yeah. Whoopi. I think, okay, I actually am going to save the worst till last. Cara Delevingne wearing a sort of, um, what's that movie? I'm so, You guys have to forgive me, something's gone wrong in my brain. I think it's that trauma therapy's gone wrong in my brain. What's that fucking movie? The Fifth Element. She's sort of got a bit of a Fifth Element vibe to her, but white. She's wearing slacks, like a pantsuit, and then what looks like a bulletproof vest with nothing underneath it. And in red writing on the front of it, it says, Peg the Patriarchy. And Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Do you know what that means? Nope. Okay. Let me just help you with that. Please, Pegging can we just section- move on, please? No, I think this is, you need to know this. Oh, God. Pegging. Pegging is a sexual act that usually involves a cis woman donning a strap on. What's dildo a cis? And making, cisgendered is you identify as what you were born as. Okay, so remind me after this to tell you an amazing story about that. I will. I will. So, pegging is a sexual act that usually involves a cis woman donning a strap on and and fucking her partner in the bum bum. So. I like how, you know, in the age of us identifying everything as something or another while also wanting to not be identified as anything. Back in my day, that was just sex. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so she's saying fuck the thing. patriarchy. She's saying, yeah, she's saying fuck the patriarchy. Okay, got it. Way. Moving on. And actually, I feel like most men would quite like that. And... I think that she, her statements backfired on her. Also, I'm bored of hearing about the patriarchy and I'm beginning to wonder if it even exists. So for that reason, I hate the outfit. Moving okay, on. Okay, next outfit. Gigi Hadid. Okay, how many of these are you going to go through? The b- bad ones. Hate it, hate the hair color, hate the dress. It looks like she's got two dresses on. I don't understand it. The absolute worst of the worst of the worst. Yeah. J-Lo. Really? That's your worst of the worst? Have you, Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. She looks like fucking Indiana Jones. <laughs> she really does. She's wearing like animal pelts and 
<laughs> what it's about really what about weird. this person this harris reed who is i don't know who that is but she's wearing like feathers or no like straw it's like it's like uh grass oh i thought that was iman that's david bowie's wife oh see i have no idea who's harris reed Oh, that's the designer. Okay. Harris reads the designer. Yeah. No, I hated that. Okay, so that was really bad. Billie Eilish as well. I don't know who let her do what that. Was what was going the on fuck? there? I don't what understand. And why are they you putting can't... her picture next to Marilyn? Because she has it, blonde it, hair. I know. It's just awful. It just it. It's so horrible and tragic to see. She's so young, and she looks like she's fifty years old in that outfit. And I, I think Grimes was my favorite. One of my favorites. I loved her look. She her, her accessories were a metal mask on her face, a book, and a sword. And for that reason, I think she wins the Met Gala. And I liked Jordan Alexander in the rainbow thing that looked like different silks wrapped around her. And she had like a sheer corset on top. I thought that was cool and interesting. What's her name? It's Lily Depp. Lily Wait, Rose Depp. Lily Rose Depp. I actually loved her outfit. Did you see it? I did. I liked it. It's like really weird, but cute. It was okay. And for Kate Hudson looked good. Overall, it was a disaster. My favorite, I think, was whoever this is. Who's that? Darling. <laughs> Who is that? It's Kendall Jenner. Okay. Yeah, she looked nice. She really looked nice. Now, that was a nice dress. That's beautiful. I just think, unfortunately, because overall it was shit, it was like everyone was brought down by the next shit outfit next yeah. to them. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just, it was just a disaster. I, I just, know. Once you've seen Indiana Jones walk onto the red carpet at the Met Gala. I would have just know. got back in the limo and left. Yeah, just left. It's, it's done. Quite, it's, you're going to need quite a big palate cleanser after that to keep moving through the event. Exactly. Um, yeah, you, I never thought about that. You got to watch out for who you're next to. Who you're yeah. in? Who you're in between? Are yeah, you in charge so, of that, or did that you just? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Wait. Pick. Okay. <laughs> the last point of the Met Gala. Did you see AOC wearing the white dress that says "Tax the Rich" on the back of it? Yes. I mean, look at where you are. Look at who you're around. You're at a fundraiser for a museum. With the richest, most influential people in the world, gleefully, maniacally smiling, looking back over your shoulder, wearing a tax the rich thing. In the middle of a sh world crisis. I just, I agree the rich should be taxed, the super rich should be taxed. I agree with that. But why not be more specific? Why not say, um, tax Jeff Bezos? <laughs> You know, oh I think God. it would be. Can you please like, make that dress for yourself? You know, tax, tax the tax, and then just a list of like Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, you know, whoever runs fucking GlaxoSmithKline, um, the 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 guys at Pfizer and Moderna. You know, tax them. <laughs> like that's tax who Moderna. You should be. <laughs> Good God, man. <laughs> Do you know what? I get it. I get for a little second. I was like, "Ooh, thrilling!" And then I sort of just thought, "This is stupid." And you look like a fucking asshole. I agree. As you're going to hobnob all night with all your rich friends. Fuck off, AOC. Yeah, AOC, whoever that is. Alex. Okay. Can, are you joking? <laughs> From the desk of Annabelle Jones, it's not world news, it's not important news, it's Annabelle news. What do you got this week for us, Annabelle? I love how much you hated talking about the Met. Well, I the hate Met it, was part I hate of it. my news, I that was it. one of the Oh, things. sorry, shit, the news already started? No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. That was, that was just some chit-chat. That so was just us being fashionistas. Oh my god, you guys, fashion. Okay, so... I hope when we go to the Met, the theme is good. Otherwise, I'm not going. <laughs> I'm actually sweating from this conversation. <laughs> I'm sweating. I don't know why it sent me into a stress state. <laughs> um, okay, so from the desk of... I'm going to keep it short and sweet this week, you guys. Some news has come in that I could have fucking fallen to my knees and wept about. Okay. 
The National Health Institute of America, which is the primary agency of the United States government responsible for biomedical and public health research, has awarded $1.67 million on a study into the vaccine's effects on menstruation. Fucking wow. yes. I am... The relief I feel in my body, I can't even tell you. I'm just so relieved. So... There's going to be five studies funded, conducted by researchers at Boston University, Harvard Medical School, John Hopkins University, Michigan State, and Oregon Health and Science University, will likely incorporate between 400,000 and 500,000 participants, including adolescents, transgender and non-binary people. And according to Diana Bianchi, director of the Agency's Institute of Child Health and Human Development, which is funding the research, along with the National Health Institute, Office of Research for Women's Health. Year-long studies will exclude. Yeah, that's not very long, is it? Will exclusively incorporate participants who have not yet been vaccinated, both those who intend to be as well as those who don't, to be able to study possible changes to menstrual cycles before and after vaccination. The findings will hopefully be published by the end of 2022 or soon after. And Stacey Misma, a professor of reproductive biology at Michigan State University, will use the funding to expand two studies she's leading that are already underway on infertility and endometriosis to determine whether the vaccines or pandemic-related stress and anxiety are impacting women's periods. This is the bit that really got me going. I mean, I knew it, but I didn't know how recent. Information on reproductive health has not been historically collected in vaccine trials. And in our current vaccine surveillance system, Farlan said in part because it was not until 1993 when the Revitalization Act was signed into law that the National Health Institute established federal guidelines requiring women and minorities to be included in clinical research. That means... The government wasn't using women or minorities in their medical research for things that affect both women and minorities all the way up until 1993. What? Isn't that shocking? So what, they were testing on white men? They were just testing on dudes and white men and they didn't think, oh yeah, we probably should have a look at some other people as well. And if you don't believe in institutionalized racism, you can fucking stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, But positively, I am just over the moon about this. I think a year is probably not long enough, but it's at least going to be some fucking information. Just something, anything. Give us anything to go on. Yes. And it also just makes me feel slightly safer in in saying to people like, hey, uh, I'm not quite ready to get vaccinated because of the effects on my menstrual cycle as somebody that has endometriosis and other hormonal problems, cystic ovaries, all of that. And sort of, it kind of justifies my hesitation slightly because if it feels as though it's something that needs to be researched, then it's obviously a bit of an issue. Um, And that is my big news. And it's just made me feel so relieved just that anyone cares to even have a look at it. Um, It makes me feel much safer and like I'm a step closer to potentially getting the vaccine sooner than later. So that is my amazing news from the desk of Annie Jones. It makes you feel less crazy too because when when nobody is talking about this and you're Mm -hmm. you're labeled crazy for even questioning Mm -hmm. what's going on, it's just really... A scary place to live so this is a good feeling that somebody gives a fuck yeah and that it's a government body funding the research as well which also makes me feel like eh, is the research going to be unbiased i'm not so sure <laughs> but um but at least it's something it's just a crumb for me to feel yeah slightly hopeful so i'll take it something to climate. cling on to <laughs> yeah in this climate in this economy I'll take a crumb. It's like you're floating in the ocean after a shipwreck and some tiny little suitcase comes along that will give you some kind of flotation. (laughs) You're still floating in the middle of the ocean with no rescue, but at least you have. But at least I've got a suitcase to hold on to. (laughs) 
Um, all right, that's my news. Just bar- oh, and also, barbing in the waves. The other bit of news, which is um, really not really news, but I just wanted to share with you, was that my sister a few weeks ago met Ariana Grande at a birthday party. Okay. And they had a chat, and apparently Ariana was asking her all kinds of questions about how we grew up and our dad and what it was like and... I thought that would be interesting for you to know that even somebody like Ariana Grande is interested in this topic. Um, but <laughs> Screw you. You're just trying to build your case for our TV show, you yeah, guys. And I won't stop. I will not stop. But what I wanted to tell you, most importantly, is that I pulled a Lucy Walsh and I sent her in a message on Instagram saying, you met my sister and you had a little chat and it's made us all so excited and we're huge fans as a family and um it's just really exciting so good for you you thank you for chatting with my sister and making all of our week and i haven't heard back and i never will but the point (laughs) is is i put myself out there and i sent her a message wow well that's powerful and that's going to uh create miracles in your life whether you realize it or not oh my god imagine if i become friends with ari so that's my news from the desk of well let us know if she writes you back i will it's not world news it's not important news it's It's lucy and annabelle Annabelle news News. okay and then we just do it there we go okay okay progress got it and then we just both do it okay so we did it and now over to you lucy thank you annabelle so much so from the desk of my desk what (laughs) Um, (laughs) breaking news a woman in australia comes face to face with a snake in a supermarket Yes, Mm -mm. you heard me right. Not just any snake, but a 10-foot diamond python emerged from a shelf above the spice jars in a Sydney supermarket. Absolutely not. Helena Alati was browsing the spice aisle when she came face to face with a huge snake. She says, I was just in the spice aisle just looking for something. Oh, no, wait, she's Australian. Let me try doing. All right, accent. mate. I was in the spice aisle. I was in the spice for my Barbie. <laughs> I was in the spice aisle looking for something to put on my chicken that night. <laughs> so I didn't initially see it. What am I doing? I sound like fucking. <laughs> I sound like Russell Crowe in some bad movie. Um, <sighs> I was in the spice aisle just looking for something to put on my chicken that night. So I didn't see it because it was curled up behind the glass jars of spices and then it poked its head out and stared at me eight inches from my own face what yep uh fortunately this woman was a trained snake catcher so she told the oh fuck off she she? told the employees i'll be right back i'm gonna run home and get my snake bag which is apparently a thing that they keep with them so she came back and caught it up off of the spice rack and took it out to the woods it's a happy ending Oh, the clo- at least the snake's free. The lockdowns in Australia are so crazy. I'm surprised she was allowed to go to the shops. Well, she frankly. said she said about it. If anything, I think everyone was a little bit excited. We were all in lockdown for so long, so it was the most excitement we've had for a long time. Oh, bless Australia! <laughs> That's my news. Wow. Thank you for sharing yep. that completely bizarre story. The fact that she's a snake catcher and the snake decided to make himself known to her, I think is very interesting. What are the chances? I believe in the laws of attraction, so I think they're quite high. Me too. Well, that was a thrilling from the desk of. Should we move on to some listener feedback? We should, please. Nuggets? So we spoke about, do you believe in angels last week with our lovely guest, Melissa Roxburgh, yes. star of Manifest on Netflix. People started coming out of the woodwork and saying, I know her from Star Trek. I yeah. know her from Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. Yeah. Lovely Melissa. Yeah, yeah. She's done lots of things. So actually, a girl called Annabelle shared one of her okay. angel stories with me. And I thought it was so cute. Yes, of course I believe in angels. My Filipina angel. Her name is Jonah Jane. She accidentally joined this Facebook group that was meant for everyone working for Northwestern's radio station. The group was called Feelings. And this woman, Jonah Jane, joined the Facebook group because she wants to talk about her feelings. 
Long story. <laughs> this is so sweet. Long story short, she accidentally became best friends with all of us. She's so emotionally aware, intelligent, and so beyond loving. We formed a genuine friendship, and she's gotten me through so much. We've never even met. She's c cultivated this relationship with the WNUR kids, and we're all like, this woman is an actual saint, an angel. When I was in a dark place, Jonah was really there for me. She made me this diamond bead art of me kissing my cat. She's so pure and deserves for everyone to know about her and talk about her. That's so cute. That's lovely. Just accidentally joined a Facebook group meant for a university in America because she wanted to talk about her feelings. And now she's become their best friend. All the way I from the Philippines that. to Chicago. Wow. Um, we got one yesterday, which I haven't finished reading. Great show on angels, ladies. You are my angels. You have no idea how your words and laughter and knowledge help me tremendously. From Rachel Abinanti. She's so sweet. Yeah, very. You never know where your want... angels are going to come from. You really don't. You really, really don't. Do you want to hear another angel story? Sure. From Hannah Lou Clark, who's a singer and songwriter yes. who I know from England. Shout out to Hannah Lou Clark. When I was younger, maybe 12 or 13, my friend's mum bought this book for me and wrote this cute note in the front. I've always believed in angels, even more so in the last few years after losing a close friend who I believe is still helping me every day. Thanks as always for your pod. Every episode resonates with me in some way. Lots of love to you both. And the book is called Angel Magic by Margaret Nalon. All about angels and how to bring their magic into your life. So that was a really interesting chat because I'd never talked about angels before or really thought about them very much. And everybody's feedback really got my cogs turning. It's sort of a whole part of life and the world I'd never really even considered or thought about. I think of angels, I think of the angel Gabriel and I think of church and religion. And mm. I'd sort of never really thought about everyday angels and I think that that might be really a real thing. I do too. I really do. I think there's angels walking amongst us all the time and we just don't realize it. That's beautiful, Lucy. <laughs> no, it really is. It's just so nice that you think that. It, it's, it never would have crossed my mind. I never would have thought that. I'm like, mm. think I think about like aliens walking amongst us, but I never would have thought like, Oh, yeah, a fucking beautiful angel, mm -hmm. you know, wrapped up in a human body. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a step further. I think we are all angels wrapped up in human bodies. Damn, okay. We just, we don't live to our potential sometimes because we've forgotten our true nature. So we believe that we're human and then we fall. I think that's what a fallen angel means. So we're all fallen angels, I guess. <laughs> so you think everybody has the potential to have an angel-like effect in another person's life? I do, because I'm sitting here looking at you, thinking about how much of an angel you've been in my life. And we I know Aww. we talked about that last week, so I don't need to repeat it. But absolutely, we've all been angels for each other at one time or another, and for ourselves, what a very lovely, hopeful thought. Encouraging, hopeful, loving thought. So from that thought, let's move into something rotten. <laughs> let's move into the shit show. Let's uh, move into that was... uh, the rest of the world. <laughs> well, you know, Hawaii was really powerful. Uh, for... Oh, yeah. Tell us oh, about it. Because oh. there seems to be a little something that you guys weren't talking about. It's a little, well... I said, is, I said, what, how, you're on a trip with a load of girls, aren't you? And you're like, no, it's just the two of us. And I thought, well... You said you were with some other <laughs> girls. So what's going on there? Let me tell you, um, to put it in a nutshell, I basically landed for my second time after being turned around <laughs> back to L.A. and getting back on the plane to try again. When I landed for the second time in Hawaii, I walked straight into an episode of The White Lotus. Oh, wow. With the worst bitch fight I've ever experienced in my life in full swing. 
And oh I'm all God. of a sudden in the middle of it when I don't even know, I haven't even gotten my bearings yet. I walk into the most beautiful hotel and the air is sweet and there's beautiful music wafting along <laughs> and somebody puts a lay over my head and I'm looking around for my friend and I get start getting these phone calls. I don't know these people. They are friends of other people. So basically what happened is one girl got caught in a lie. Oh, boy. That oh was boy. A, a very harmful thing that she did. And she didn't want to confront that. She didn't want to take responsibility for the lie and for what mm -hmm. she had done. And so she, being a bit of a narcissist, says, that's it, I'm leaving. And that was even more hurtful to the people who were involved. So she ended up leaving. Mm -hmm. And I lost my temper a little bit, which I probably should have just stayed out of it. But I may have tried to block the door. Oh, God, Lucy, <laughs> come on. Why do you care if she stays or goes? It's got nothing to do with you. I know. I was like, talk to your friend. Don't do this. This is not right. You don't just leave a vacation like that. Yeah, just let it go. It's still got nothing. I it's know. Just I like, I ha it was half ass. Like, I, I like kind of stood in front of the door and said that. And then I, I said, look, the bottom line is you got caught in a lie and you don't want to face it, which she did not <laughs> like. That did not, Love that didn't it. help things. That didn't help. And then, oh, then she called security. Oh, because she said that someone wasn't letting her out of the room. Oh, for God's and sake. by that time, I had already moved over to the. I was just like, "Fuck, fuck this!" And then, uh, yeah, that was it. So it escalated, and it was a total episode of White Lotus. It was over oh very quickly. Oh my God! Imagine telling a lie, getting caught in the lie. Yeah, and not just going. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> exactly. I know. And, and then just doubling it down, making the scene so large that you fly off from your vacation, call security, <laughs> burn the place to the ground on the way out, burn the friendships to the ground, instead of just going, do you know what? I've actually been a total ass. Yeah, no, it was the opposite. It's like gotten even worse since then, but... These aren't my people. I really don't function in my life that way. And you know what I came away with? I returned home feeling so grateful for my non-dramatic life and my healthy relationships. Like I said in last episode, like my relationships are full. I choose them carefully at this point in my life. And I don't, I don't dabble with shit like that. If somebody did that to me, it would be done. I'd be like, good riddance. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. I don't no, that's not allowed in yeah. my in my space. And yeah, yeah, I just came home feeling really proud of myself <laughs> for Good. for where I'm at and the choices I make and the things I allow around me. And you and I talk Good. about boundaries all the time, and mm. it's one of those things. You know, over time, you you start to live by putting in boundaries for yourself with relationships, with habits, and you don't realize that they accumulate and that you're uh -huh. in, a, in a good place. So it's like going to the mm -hmm. gym every day. You go to the gym every day for six months. You don't feel like you're getting stronger. And then all of a sudden you can pick up a way heavier weight. Yeah. And you go, exactly. whoa, it well, does that's pay the off. The thing about working on yourself is, you know, like with that panic attack situation I had a few weeks ago, the, the work I did six years ago Help me navigate that situation. Exactly. And I was really proud of that. And I thought, oh, fucking hell, I can do this. Yeah. Because I put the put the work in before. Yeah. So I think that's what I want to share from it. I don't I don't want to, you know, air these people's dirty laundry. I don't have anything against anybody who was on that trip. But I would say I think what I have to share, what I learned from it was that I'm doing the work, and, and I want to say that to the listeners. Trust that you're doing the work and that it, it it's building up and it's going to help you when you need it. Yeah, you might not see instant results, but that doesn't mean that transformations and and miracles aren't happening. Exactly. You know, 
Um, and I liked that I came home having a new understanding of that. And I think that's important for all of us. You just, you give up at a certain point because you go, oh, it's not working. Fuck it. There's no point. Mm. Well, it's not until you get tested that you know whether it's worked or not. You exactly. Know? Yeah. So that was uh, that was the dramatic side of our trip. I mean, come on. Like, a girl's trip without drama as if. I guess that's why I don't go on them. So once Melissa and I were the only ones together, we had a wonderful time, like we said. It was the trip. Like you always say, it's not the whatever that you expected, but it's what you deserve. How do you always say yeah, that funny well, thing? It wasn't the trip you wanted, it's the trip you deserved. Yeah, it was perfect. It was exactly what it was meant to be. And then I, I love that for oh, you. Oh, do you love that for me? <laughs> I actually, by the way, you fucking cunt, I actually do love that for you. <laughs> And then I came back home to just a shit show of life back in Los Angeles. So it seems like you've come out of retirement. You retired a few weeks ago and it seems to be. (laughs) I did retire a few weeks ago. But yesterday, (laughs) a lot of career stuff happened all at once. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. Good. Oh, whatever. I'm back in retirement today. Day by day. You just pick and choose. Today I'm retired. Not exactly. So Thursday, I'll go to work. So I think that what that is, is just being normal. You don't have to call it retirement or not. It's just, uh, but today I'm going to rest. Tomorrow I might. <laughs> oh, is that what that work. is? Yeah, yeah, it's resting. You don't have to totally <laughs> give up everything to no, have no, a no, down day. Say, today I'm having a day away from things, or today I'm resting, or today I'm not going to pick up my computer. Oh. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> You're like what what wait what i don't have to just burn it all to the ground exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh, i know that God. feeling though when you're just like that's fucking it <laughs> like <laughs> like um, i am done i came home the other night my family were away at a wedding and i came home and i've got this bag full of english chocolate lots and lots of english chocolate that Ooh. my friend sent me the dogs no Broke into my cupboard. No. Pulled the bag down off of the hook. Don't they die? Don't they die if they eat chocolate? I texted my sister and I said, your dogs are going to die. They've just eaten like five pounds of chocolate. They were fine. They took it down off the hook. They climbed. They literally like used my shit to climb up and pull (laughs) the bag off the hook. And they swallowed these chocolates whole with no, with the wrappers on and everything. So for the last three days. They've been shitting and throwing up entire like flake bars, crunchy bars, twirl bars. Luckily, it the chocolate that it was was like Cadbury, so it's just mostly milk and sugar. If it had been like proper chocolate, like dark chocolate or white chocolate or like actual food rather than just like reconstituted sugar mulch, they would have died with the amount that they ate, I oh think. Oh my but god. It's actually mostly only small dogs that die and they're massive. <laughs> Well, it's, it's it's like food poisoning, but with the small dogs, it gets their heart rate, the caffeine in... <laughs> sorry, I've got hiccups today. <laughs> the caffeine in the chocolate gets their heart rate going, and that's what kills them, I think. Otherwise, they just throw up. So when that happened, I just sat down on the step, and I was like... You know when you have the... <laughs> it's when you're just like... <laughs> that's it. This you're is like, it. This is... I'm good. This is my... <laughs> this is my Joker origin story moment, and... Um, <laughs> And I'm now going to go Joker and I'm burning this house to the ground yeah. with all of the animals in it. And I'm burning everyone's cars to the ground and I'm leaving and I'm never coming and back. And I've just got a smile plastered to my face, <laughs> but no joy in my eyes. <laughs> I'm fine. No joy in the eyes. Just a huge smile, a huge toothy <laughs> grin. Don't you hate those people who are just like, you're like, are you okay? And they're like, yes, I'm wonderful. <laughs> and they have everything everything is so wonderful and they like sip their drink and they're like and they just have panic in their eyes you're fucking you literally are the personification of pain what is going on when those people say that shit to me i'm just like wow okay (laughs) speaking of i wanted to give you my condolences about ratty's passing oh thank you we haven't talked about that on the pod (sighs) <sighs> Ratty had to be put to put to sleep. I, it takes everything in me not to say killed. I just I have to stop saying it. 
Oh my god, you're no, you're right because on on Hawaii, I, I started I'm, I started grieving my cat crazy. That's weird. The words that came out of my mouth were I'm sorry that I killed you. And I thought, yeah. whoa, you, it's so strange how we see putting a pet to sleep. Yeah. We like we don't see it as killing them. We see it as helping them, but we fucking killed them. Well, if I you think about see it. it as, I see it pri- primarily as killing them, but it's for their own good, which is such a strange thing it's to say. It's so and weird. The process of going there with her, it, she was in a terrible way, but she was still happy to be alive. Yeah, she was night. eating her little fruit. She yeah, was laying with she you. Li- yeah, and she liked to be cuddled and she liked to scoot around. And, you know, her tumor was big and she wasn't good. But she was still uh, happy to be alive. And then that one morning it switched. And yeah. so it was like, okay, it's got to be today because I'm not going to have her suffer for a, mo- a moment longer than necessary. So I took her to the vet and it was really sad. I think it was the saddest I've ever been when putting a pet down. It was awful. I hated it. I hated the feeling of handing over this. Okay, let's not, let's not, let's not. Well, that's what I had to do. I know, but it's hard for me to go through that again because it takes. (laughs) Okay, well, I went through it too. (laughs) So I'm talking to you about it, you fucking asshole. (laughs) I'm sorry. But handing over the thing that you love to be killed is like. A really strange feeling, even though you know it's absolutely a hundred percent the right thing to do. Instinctively, you're going, "No, this is wrong. I should," uh, but you absolutely know you have to do it, and that's how I felt with her. I was completely resolute in that she was not to suffer for a moment longer. But inside of you, there's that terrible feeling of like of. Being instinctively wrong in some way, um, and it's horrid. Yeah, I would horrid, horrid, I wouldn't horrid. wish that on anyone. No, it's, it's awful, devastating. And, but it's just got to be done, you know. And that's the thing that's fucking rough about it is like, and that's the thing about taking on pets is like, you know, my little cat that's turned up. He's trash. up there on the counter behind you. He loves his trash. He's he's got. I've bought him beds. I've bought him cushions. I've bought him jumpers. I've bought him everything. What is he on? The garbage. A trash bag. <laughs> trash kitty. So he's really ill. He's in stage four, um, yeah, kidney failure. Oh, I'm so sorry. How did you find that out? Well, because I took him to the vet because he was so thin and I was feeding him and I didn't understand. And also I wanted to, this lady that had him was not the best pet owner. She's trying her best, but she definitely needed some help. So I took him off. And yeah, they were like, he's really dying. And I was like, okay, that's weird because he doesn't seem like he is. And so they said to me that I either had to take him and put put him through all this treatment, which was going to cost $5,000 for a cat that's eight years old that isn't my cat, or I have to put him down. I said, I'm not doing either of those things. Sorry. I said, I'm to get, and then they gave me all this medicine for him, which none of it made any sense really. Um, so I'm like with Ratty, I'm going to keep giving him a good time and then he'll, sh- I'll see when it's time to go. You know, you know, when it's you that do know. moment, you do know, you know, when it's tipped over and I know I'm going to have to do it w- again with him probably soon, but right now he's happy. He goes and plays, he catches rats, he eats his food, he's ravenous, you know, all of the things that they said, they were like, oh, is he okay? It, you know, he must not be eating. And I'm like, no, he's eating is so i don't really know what's going on with that cat i think it it likes being alive and like ratty that's amazing that he came to you to spend the final part of his life (sighs) he came somewhere where he's happy he's obviously very happy with you he's glued to your side all the time i was devastated when the when the vet called me i actually burst out crying i'm sorry over a cat i've known for a month but I am very attached to him. That's because and, you have a huge, beautiful, loving heart. Oh, God, I love him. And I just feel for him. He spent eight years in the shelter. He's only been out for a year, and now he's got fucking kidney disease. But he's right where he wants to be, and he is yeah, getting all the window. love, 
all the love, all the comfort, all the food. He is in good hands and he is enjoying the last part of his life. He really is. He is. Yeah, he really is. He's like very happy here. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess that the universe just seems to be telling me at this time in my life that I am uh, in, a, in a role of end of life care which I reject. Well, you know and- what's interesting, and this is kind of heavy what I'm going to, well, very heavy what I'm going to say. It might be giving you that healing energy because you did not get that with Ryan. You were not able to be part of his end of care, end of life care. Yeah. So it's bringing yeah. you these healing situations where you are, by going through that end of life cycle with a being, it, I don't know. Only you can speak to mm. this, but maybe it will bring some kind of healing or experience that ties mm. in with Ryan somehow because he was taken away from you so quickly. I think I understand what you're saying, but the way that I feel my experience with Ryan was is that I was in his life for a very specific reason at the end of his life. Mm. And while I didn't watch Ryan become an old man and take care of, care of him and do all of that stuff that you do as you age I do feel that I was there specifically for a reason and that was to to help him live his best life at the end of his life yeah not pleased about it and I just like to say to the universe here on recorded record on my podcast I am unavailable for any more end of life care so Everyone else has to die after me moving forward, including everyone. So, <laughs> Fair enough. So, And I want to live a long life, so you've all got to buckle up for a good 1.30. All right. O'clock. I'm here for it. <laughs> I am here for it. And I love that for um, you. Oh, I love it for me too. <laughs> um, you said something earlier which I can't get out of my mind. I really need you to talk to me about it, which was <laughs> when I was talking about Cara Delevingne, who is absolutely grinding my gears. Did you see that my vagina thing that she did? No, I she's don't like, see anything she's, she's ever all, done. She's all, my vagina, my pussy. She like minted her pussy or something for an NFT, which by the way, I'd like to say I did a year before, before it was even cool. <laughs> I made that joke and it now it's not a joke and people are actually like minting their pussies. If you don't know what minting is and NFTs is, I don't really know either. It's a thing where it's like about cryptocurrency. It sounds like a pyramid scheme and a scam. Uh, small dick energy. Um, okay. So <laughs> small pussy energy. Um, but anyway. Yeah, Cara speaking Delevingne of all that. Pegging, 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 pegging. And we were talking about cisgender and that made you get triggered. And then you said, something happened to me. And I want to know what it was because I love you on all of this. It is hilarious what happened to me. Well, it wasn't hilarious. I'm scared. You've got to be careful what you say. Can't get us canceled. I'm going <laughs> to, I know, I know. I'm going to try to say this as gently as I can. So I was in a restaurant a few weeks ago with two girlfriends And the waiter came to the table, and he was a young man, dressed like a man, looked like a man, hair was kind of long, back in like a ponytail kind of thing, and and I said something to him, he commented on our conversation, and I said, oh, he gets it, and he stops what he's doing and he looks at me and he kind of reels back and he goes, it's they, thank you very much. And he said it with an attitude and he walks away and I, and the girls were kind of silent and it was a very awkward moment. And I said, you guys, what just happened? I have no idea. Please explain this to me. What was, what, what, what did I do wrong? What did I do? And they were like, you gender assumed. I looked at him and he was presenting Mm -hmm. a man. As a man, yeah. And then for him to embarrass me publicly and make it my fault, that's that's where I I, I start to say, all right, this is fucking crazy. I think it is really tricky. I think it's really, really tricky. He came back to the table and I said, (laughs) in my straight ahead way, I, I need to finesse things sometimes. I said, 
Can we talk about this? Because I want to <laughs> I want to understand what happened here. And I find this really interesting. Can you explain to me how I just offended you, please? Can you mansplain to me? Sorry. Can you then explain <laughs> to me? He said, look, I present as a man at work, but in my everyday life, I am a woman. And the official term for that is they. And I said, but you don't, you, you don't <laughs> fucking know that. He's at work. He just told you he presents as a man at work. How are you meant to know? It's ridiculous. So they, them is used for a person who does not identify as a male or female. But how is that my or- problem? <laughs> how does that give you the right to embarrass me in public? Okay. Sorry, I, that's not my fault. Sorry. I understand what you're saying completely. You do not He's embarrass reacting. a customer like that. I should have gone to management, exactly. but I'm not okay, going to so open a can of worms. That's my problem with it. My problem with this situation is that, first of all, he's just told you he presents as a man at work and he's at work. So you called him sir or he or whatever you called him. Right. You're not a fucking mind reader. Exactly. And you're not his friend. So how do you know that he is a a woman outside of work? First of all, you're not a fucking mind reader and you don't know him. And then second of all, forget all of your gender identity and your politics and whatever the fuck. You're at work. You're at work. And... Your customer is the focus. And if you feel that you have need to be called a, called they, them, or he, or she, or whatever it is, speak to your fucking manager about it and wear a sticker on you. If it's that important to you. <laughs> you know, if it's that important to you. I'm sorry. People aren't... I don't know. If you present yourself as something, I'm going to take you at your word, basically. It's like, how dare you not fucking call me a mermaid because I identify as a mermaid at night. <sighs> God, I honestly, I've got, I'm, this is where I get into hot water. I just think it's really, really unprofessional to, to embarrass you. What would have been really easy in that situation would be, I identify as they, them. What do you identify as? That would have been so kind, so easy, so non-confrontational. Yeah. But they made it into a confrontation and I just I don't care about how bad your day is or what your gender is or whatever the fuck when you're at work you're at work keep your shit together keep your pussy or your dick on whatever the fuck you have on that day on straight (laughs) like you just gotta be um you you still have to have manners and and um understand that most people around you aren't on your level I'm sorry they're not they're most people aren't thinking about what your gender is. They don't care. Nobody cares. They, this is the thing. It's like, no one cares what your gender is. You're not on TikTok right now. You're not on Twitter. You're not going to get a cookie for sharing what your fucking gender is. You're a wait- waiter or waitress in a restaurant. You're there to serve food. I'm sorry. In the way that when I was in a shop, I was there to wrap up people's bougie candles and fucking puzzles during quarantine you know it's like i wasn't there for any other reason to be anybody's friend than to provide them with a service i had a similar experience at the shop where some ladies walked in who looked like ladies and i said hello ladies and they looked at me like i they looked at them like i came up to them and slapped them in the face and i knew immediately what i'd done wrong which was gender assume but (sighs) <sighs> I just don't know that I'm ever going to stop gender assuming. Sorry. I won't. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm not. I, I am all think for I can. you being... Life's confusing enough. If you want to let me know that you want to be identified in a certain way, that's certainly absolutely fine. And I completely respect it. You want to be they, them. You want to be she, her, he, him. There's all these other things now. And like, I saw the other day on TikTok, somebody identifying as like, I identify as bug. <laughs> like, if you want an explanation, then please feel free to reach out to me. You totally can. Have you considered that their reaction came from embarrassment also because of how they feel about how they're presenting? So sure, I get that. I get that it must be an awful feeling to feel a certain way inside and want to be taken differently. But his tone 
was just completely inappropriate. Yeah, I think there's definitely a way to do things. And I think with went, aggression. It's they. It's, it's they. Thank you very much. Oh, for God's sake. And like slammed down the thing he had in his hand and walked away. And my table was just completely silent. So shocked into silence. You know, he could say the same thing about your reaction, but it's it's different folks, different strokes, and it's I think just, it didn't need to be, like, an aggressive situation. No, it didn't. Um, I think that they, thems, are the vegans of, um, of gender identity. They just really want to let everyone know. <laughs> and then when he came back to the table and I wanted to talk about it with him, I got myself into even deeper water because I just couldn't say anything right. And I, he walked away again, even more angry than he was the first time. So it was just a mess. But I, I thought it was such a shame that, that that's where we're at. And exactly right. Exactly what you're saying. People who don't know you, they're not mind readers. There's a way to say it. And I would never want to make anybody feel badly about themselves. So I think with everything, I think this speaks to so many issues that we have in society. It right really now. does. If you're going to bludgeon people over the head with your ideas, your ideals, you're not really going to get a response from them. I think that as much as it's not anybody else's responsibility to explain themselves to you, if you are coming from a perspective where you want people to understand you, then sorry, you've got some explaining to do. And that goes for so many things. It's like a conservative thing. It's a liberal thing. It's an identity thing. It's a, you know, interpersonal thing. If I want people to understand or have insight into why I'm not currently vaccinated, I have to be willing to explain that, you know, that's the choice I've made. And I think that there just is this totally like millennial weird thing of like mm, that's what i want so that's what i'm gonna get and i am it's a self-centeredness that is actually out of control and it's what we said last week when we said it's the fishing for compliments thing if you were focused outward on other people and how you could yeah. improve the world you wouldn't have time having conversations like this I think everyone just lives in these little bubbles and everyone wants to be so self-important and so well, see, gotta, we live in an age of narcissism. Everything, exactly. Everything, everything is about us. Everything is all about us. Everything. And my body, my choice, my abortion, my vaccine, my vote, my house, my family, my money, my, you know, all of it. It's, um, you know, my fucking whatever. It's just everything is so my life is so important. My choice is so important. Your choice should be like mine. Respect me, respect me, respect me. And it's you know, people's know. choices I, are important, but it's there. There's something else going on that I can't quite put into words and I don't like it. And I just want to go away and live can't. in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> people aren't willing to have conversations about these things anymore. And no, they're the not. And I think, I think that people just expect, well, that's what I said. So, you know, whatever. And it's, you know, we're probably sounding like boomers right now because we come from, we're probably one of the last generations that, you know, went, attended schools and colleges and dinner parties where you could have a heated conversation without everyone getting offended. Yeah. And you could ask questions and without your career you're just, being canceled you're not allowed to inquire anymore even if it's coming from a good place because if you have a question and it's and you don't immediately agree with me then you're coming from a bad place right and it's just so toxic i mean a couple of weeks ago i saw that a philosophy tutor at like a massive university stepped down from his role because he felt that the school was becoming this kind of church of ideology rather than a place to inquire and learn and explore. Um, you know, you and I have gone on about this before. Everyone is just so fragile. It's, it's unbelievable. You can't ask people questions about themselves or 
question their motives or try and understand them without them having complete fucking meltdown. And it's so boring to me. And I'm lucky that nobody in my life is like that. Well, they wouldn't be in my life if they were. Exactly. I'm somebody that likes to have explorative conversations and learn things and be wrong and happy to be wrong. It took me a really long time to understand what they, them meant. Like way longer than it should have and how you work it into conversation and all of those things. You know, it. I'm not saying that I get it right all the time. I absolutely don't. And I've got minimal patience for it, as I do with vegans, as I do with most people who have, like, special, I, I want a cookie, give me a gold star mentality. Just, no one cares. No, f- no one fucking cares about your shit, your diet, your gender, your politics. We're all just trying to get on just with it. Just focus on other people and go create something worth leaving behind. Jesus. I also think that I was really lucky to grow up in a environment where my mum isn't straight and I've got gay people on every which way of my family. So for me, gender identity, sexual orientation. What do you mean your mom those- isn't straight? My mum isn't straight. She likes women and men. She does? Yeah, and she had girlfriends. I didn't know that. Yeah, she had girlfriends all through her younger years. And so it was never taboo in my family. It was never taboo in mine either. You just lived the way you wanted and that was it. It wasn't a point of contention. Well, I think now being gay isn't really, you know, being gay now, it... I'm saying so many like, wrong things right now. I can't no, even. It, you're not. I, you're just saying, I think you're saying your experience, which is that that's the household that you grew up in. And what I'm saying is that we're lucky to have grown up in that household. Yes, we are that. lucky. And we're very lucky we didn't grow up in a household where you had to hide and that was evil if you were yeah. gay or something. I mean, laws have changed now. Like you can't, I, and of course parents are still going to be, uh, shit to their kids if they come out as gay but legally not really allowed to anymore so it's like times have changed yeah and which i think is a good thing things that we lucy that are just like above our station that i think are just like in the way that like old people not that we're mega old but you know how like old people don't understand certain things yeah you know how, like, grandpa's a bit sexist at the dinner table? Well, I think sexism's quite fun. But you know how grandpa <laughs> will say something, like, sexist yeah. or racist at the dinner oh, yeah. table? And you're like, no, oh, fucking hell. Yeah. You try and explain it to him, doesn't go in. I think that um, we are probably at that phase of our lives right now where we're like, oh, um. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Well, I also think as you being you, you're not really interested to know more. And I think as a result of that, and I say this with c- complete respect to you and your opinions, and it's like, you shouldn't really be interested. If you don't care to know more, why are you even having conversations about it? If the waiter gets annoyed with you because he wants to be called they, them, you go, no, great, fuck off, I don't care. Yeah. You know, you don't need to have a conversation with every single person just because, you know, they don't understand your way of life. I think your life would be much easier if you go, I don't know. I don't want to know. I don't really want to talk about it. Exactly. Could I, could I please get some mayonnaise? Yeah. <laughs> could you bring that drink I've been waiting on? Thanks. And I just wonder if sometimes it's best to just be who you are. You know, you don't, you're not really interested in all that. So maybe just don't talk about it or think about it. Just Larry David, the shit out of yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. You actually are a bit like Larry David. I know. Oh, I loved working with Larry David. Him and He was so kind to me when I worked on Curb Your Enthusiasm. We just sat at lunch and just bitched about the world. No, we didn't. We, talk- <laughs> we actually talked about books the whole time. He's lovely. I saw him at, um, I saw behind, I saw pictures from a fashion show because it was like New York Fashion Week last week. Wait, is it this week too? Or is it the end of it now? But um, him sitting on the side of a catwalk with his head in his hands, just so like (laughs) confused as to why he was there and bored. I don't, I don't even know if it was a real image or if someone had photoshopped it, but it seemed like maybe he was there with his daughter or something. And sort of was thinking, why am I here? (laughs) That's funny. 
Um, well, well, that's a really, really interesting little um, little situation. And it's, you know, w- there's going to be more stuff like this. Uh, and there is increasingly more stuff like this, whether it's gender identity in politics, abortion, the vaccine. As long as we're on this path of, as a society of individualism and narcissism, it's just going to be more and more of that. Um, well, which is a, why I'm considering just disappearing into yes. some kind of self-sustaining cult situation. Um, it's a good reminder to me. Mind. Good reminder to me of why I don't go out in public or turn on any form of news. <laughs> Quite happy doing my work from home and underlining every line of Walden by Henry David Thoreau, which I will be boring you to death with in the next episode. Oh, great. Um, yeah, I need to read that. Someone else mentioned that the other day. Yeah, I've been on a bit of an internet detox um, the last two weeks. And I felt so much better. I go on Instagram because the algorithm on there has got me dialed. So, you know, just some animals, lipstick, fashion. I don't, I'm not being served things I don't want to see. So, yeah. Um, so that's good. And but I've Twitter been really loving all those no news all of that i've just checked out because i was getting so stressed by everything i was getting really really stressed by all of the covid stuff all of everything 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 i was so sick of seeing chairman biden's mug on my screen every day that i uh just decided to have a little detox good um and it's really done the trick Good. You really look stunning. You're glowing. Thank you. I'm wearing makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So you always look cute. I think that the the takeaway is just keep doing the work, people. Keep going to the gym, the spiritual gym, the mental gym, the emotional gym. Keep taking care of yourself because it'll show up for you when you need it. And uh, don't make your problem someone else's problem and if you want someone to understand something about you communicate in a loving way you know what lucy that's there you go that's hit the nail on the head that's been my problem with everything i've been seeing and hearing and reading over the last couple of months is nobody has any empathy for anyone anymore jimmy kimmel went on his tv program and said we shouldn't give icu beds to the unvaccinated Wow. If that is not a sign of the moral... uh... Howard Stern said the same kind of thing. He said, if somebody won't get the vaccine, then they shouldn't be admitted to the hospital when they get COVID. Yeah, it's, um, it's a complete lack of empathy and it's really disturbing. And I think it's interlinked with the sort of culture of narcissism that we live in absolutely um and i think that's a diabolical thing to say not because i'm not vaccinated but i just think it's a real sign of the lack of empathy i think it's diabolical too and i am vaccinated so i think it's um what i would what my takeaway is from you know your story about hawaii you know the restaurant all of that And some bits from yesterday, which I'll talk about when I'm ready. It's not quite, I can't quite get there just yet. But you just engage with your empathy because it changes all of your interactions. It It changes the way you view the world. It changes your relationships. It changes your communication. And I think if you're not really sure how to do that, the best way that I've found to do it is to take a beat, take a breath and go, okay. Let me try and understand why this person is saying this or doing this or acting like this. What is it in their life? What is it about their upbringing? What is it about their situation that is making them hold this belief or react this way or respond this way? And that really helps me engage with empathy when I'm struggling to understand the person. Um, And I think that is so on my mind at the moment. 
because I think that's why I've been getting so sad and so stressed and so down and why I've had to unlock myself from the online world and be more offline is because the lack of empathy has been making me sad. Me too. And what Jeff, my love, my therapist, for those of you who haven't uh, listened to the podcast before, (laughs) Jeff always says to me is, what does he say to me, Lucy? Oh gosh, he says so many great things and I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited that we're going to end on Jeff's words. I love when we do this. But it's such a fucking classic expression. Be the energy that you want to see in the world and that you want to have reflected back at you in the world. But more importantly, feed that energy. So if you want to see a kinder, softer, more empathetic, compassionate, understanding world, take your energy away from the Jimmy Kimmels and the Howard Sterns and the shit stirrers and the fucking Tucker Carlson and all the crap you read on Twitter and the Daily Mail and all that shit. Divert your energy into sources of information and into into activities like walking along the beach or bird watching or having a tea with your friend or meditation and cultivate good, loving, empathetic energy because I truly believe that it counts and we need to take our energy away from the shysters and feed it to the good, goodness, you know, and that's, I really believe that. It's like, a, it's a take on be the change you wish to see in the world, but it's not about change. It's, it's be the thing, be it. And I want to see empathy. So I need to unhook from all that and live with empathy and tune into things that can feed that within me. I'm going Um, with you. Yeah, it's really important to me right now. And I've really been focused on it in the last two weeks because there's, I don't know what else to do. Let's all go. If we do that and our listeners do that, that's a lot of people this, this week Mm -hmm. that are going to be making a change. And check in with us, send us a, a message, tell us how that's gone for you, if you've, if you've been aware of any change as you've been working on doing that. Energy is very powerful. Yeah, yeah. Let's all, for the next week, feed the good energy in the world and turn away from the darkness. Love you. Love you. Watch out now